But don't worry, I'm just going to put it on your account so you don't have to worry about it. No Gatorade tonight. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 for our text tonight. Brother Mark 6 and 19 of Matthew. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye if therefore thy eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon, which that word means riches. Ye cannot serve God and riches. If the Lord will help me tonight for a few minutes, I'm going to talk or preach, teach, yell or tell. What is your treasure? Lay your Bibles down, lift your hands. Listen to Sister Grace and have her sing. Thank you, Jesus. God, we love you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, we appreciate you. Thank you, Lord. Father, bless the message. Give me the words to say to your children. God, that I might encourage someone through the word of God. God, when we leave here tonight, Lord, that we might be encouraged. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Praise Lord. Praise Lord. God bless you. Be seated. Thank you, Sister Christy. Hallelujah. I read a story uh, of a uh, of a where some uh, sacks, a bunch of sacks was buried in a uh, in a uh, like a swamp, in a, in a local swamp, it was sacks of twenty dollar gold pieces, just big sacks of them. One man uh, took a metal detector and spent several days. The story said looking for that buried treasure. He lost his job. He lost his home, and he never found the treasure. Just spent his time looking but never found it. And it kind of just put me to thinking about this thought here that I had tonight. If, if a person, you or me, if we can identify our treasure, what it, whatever our treasure is, if we can identify that, we'll find the focus of our heart. If we find the treasure. That, that that we treasure the most, if we can find that, then we find where our heart's at. It's a, it's a simple, simple statement. We must ask ourselves several questions as far as when living for God. What do one question is what do I think about most in, in my just every day? At, at work or wherever you're at, at home, what what do what is it that we think about the most in our life, and what is it that we talk about the most, and then what is it that we spend the most time doing? What do we think about? What do we talk about? And where do we spend, or what do we spend? most of our time on doing. And these are things, uh, and, and one other question, what would we rather be doing in our life? 
So these are questions that if we can answer some of these questions in our life, we might find our treasure. If we find, if we can answer the question, what, what is it that I think about the most? What's in my ticker? Uh, the most. I know we're human enough that we, you know, we don't walk around all the time with halo on our head. And we, and we don't walk around all the time thinking about revival. I know the Bible said pray without ceasing, but we, most of us don't do it. The Bible just says do it. And, and who can pray all the time? It's, it's not, it's not, I don't think the scripture's trying to tell us that we have to stay on our knees constantly. Hey man, we got to make a living. But I do believe the Bible is teaching us to stay prayerfully minded at all times. Amen. Willing, willing, and, and, and able. I, I have, I, 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 somebody, called, come, somebody calls me on the phone and says, I need you to, y'all remember me in prayer. I just say, well, let's pray right now. Right. Yeah. Not that I'm super spiritual. I'm certainly not. I have my carnal days just like everyone else does. Just because I'm the preacher, that don't mean that I'm exempt from situations. But if I can, if I can figure out what I think about the most, is it my job, or is it my my hobbies, or uh, is it fishing, or it's not hunting anymore because I don't like I don't I, I love to hunt, but I, I it's, it's just too much trouble. I like to fish, but I don't ever catch anything, so I fish with my fork. Down at um, the catfish uh, restaurant, you know, I, I, that's my bait. I fork it. So, it, so that's not my hobby anymore. I, I don't. I didn't realize it, but my wife told me that I almost caused a divorce hunting and fishing with her brother every weekend. That's what we spend our time doing. It. Of course, that's before I, I come to the Lord. But uh, what is it that I think about the most in my life? Or like I said, what do I? What's my what's my conversation like? Is am I trying to figure out who's going to win the ball game? Or and, and some of these things are not sin. I'm not I'm not implying that, but I'm just saying these things. If we can if we can figure out what these and answer these questions, we might find our treasure. Might find what we treasure. Spend my most time doing what. And what is it that you know? When, when you're at work, would you rather be at home? Most people would say, "Yeah." And who would you know? So, whatever your treasure is, listen to me. Whatever your treasure is, the text that I'm fixing to read you is true. Because the scripture said, "For where your treasures is." There will your heart be also. That's a true statement. That it that it's it's a fact. It's not just a prediction. That's a fact. Where your treasure is, what you think on, what you talk about, what you uh, spend your time doing, is a treasure. And that treasure is where your heart is. If you think, whatever, whatever you're thinking about all the time, recreation or something of that sort, that's where your heart's at. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a true statement. It's a hard statement. But, it's not, but it is. It, it's, a, it's a universal principle. It, ju, it, it happens to everybody. That's, that's just the way it is with everybody. Where your heart is, your treasure is. You're gonna put you. You're gonna put your time, your attention. You're gonna put your labor to wherever your heart. A man's heart is where his treasure is, and his treasure is where his heart will be. Are you understanding? I hope you understand what I'm saying. If wherever my time, my, wherever my treasure is, is where I'm gonna put my time. If, if I if I like polishing my boat. Or if I like restoring old cars, or if I like, and, and these things are not sin. I'm not implying they're sin, but if that's what, if that's what I do, if that's and that's what, if that's my treasure, you know, there's people who spend all their time 
doing certain things, and that's where their heart is. Because it's their, that's where their treasure is. It's very simple stuff. This is not a deep message tonight. It's just simple facts, principles that men and women go through every day. Now, listen carefully. I'm, I'm just about finished already with that part. And so the Bible said if a person loves God, the Bible teaches us that if a person loves God, listen carefully, he will deposit his treasure into a heavenly bank. He'll use his talents. He'll use his possessions. Whatever he has, if he's got musical ability or maybe musical talents, he'll want to spend, if he loves God, he don't want it. He will not want to use that talent for the devil. Amen. If he's a good singer, he or she, a good good musician, if they love God, then they're going to put that to work for God. One way, some way, somehow, that they're, they're going to use that talent. They're going to, and and that's to me that's depositing. That's putting that treasure that. Uh, ability to sing. God didn't bless me with the ability to sing. I don't. I can't sing. I carry a tune. I, I do okay with the group singing. I can sing kind of behind them, but I can't keep up. And so I don't sing loud because I don't want to mess them up. I heard one. Uh, it may have been Brother Stan Cook. I can't remember it, it, talking. He said. The, the hardest thing in the world about singing to a group is there's somebody always sitting on the front pew singing louder than he does and one step ahead of him. And so he can't keep, he can't keep his thoughts on what he's going to say for listening to what that person has said. You understand? And, and so, but if we're going, and that's how I would be. I, I, I could mess him, him up easy because I don't have that talent that's not my treasure. I'm doing my treasure right now. This is my treasure. And if I, if I, if if a person loves God, they're going to take their possessions is going to belong to God. Man, stopped me down at Uncle Sam down here years ago, several years ago. I was down at Uncle Sam's uh, uh, store down where Brother Billy worked at Brighton. I was in there getting a cup of coffee, and this young man standing there smoking a cigarette, and he said, are you going to Covington? I said, I am. He said, uh, can I ride? I said, you can. Yes, you can, but you can't ride with that cigarette. Right. I said, my truck's dedicated to the Lord, and, and I don't allow smoking in it. Amen. He said, well, I don't want to ride. I said, well, I didn't want you to ride to start with. <laughs> that, that, I'm going to give everything I've got to, to God. Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Everything I got belongs to God. Right. I deposit everything I've got into God. I don't. I make mistakes. I get overdrawn sometimes. But everything I got belongs to Him. Right. Are you understanding? Right. And for my and, and that's why I'm putting it in God's bank. My money. I, I, I'm going to overpay my tithes. I'm not going. I'm not going to cut God one dime, not one. If our ties are 122 dollars, we make it 130, maybe 150. My Sunday school offering is 50 dollars. We make it. We don't make it 45. It's 50 dollars. We pledge. We give 50 dollars in the Sunday school offering. That's why God blesses me. I put this into the work of that. This is my treasure. I'm not getting rich. I don't want to get rich. Man, get rich if I knock in the head. <laughs> but it's my treasure. It's my t what little talent I got. What I you're hearing. This is it. I'm doing my best right now. I'm not. You don't wait for the best. You'll miss it. This is my talent. This is what I've been, and I do this for the glory of God. I'm, I'm going. I'm going somewhere. I'll get there in a little while. 
Luke 12, 34 says, For where your treasures is, there will your heart be also. It becomes a measuring rod. It measures your, it, a measuring rod which can determine the depth of your devotion. How deep is our devotion? Man, there's, there's people who wouldn't miss a, a Saturday for going hunting or fishing. There's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But how deep is our devotion for God? There's people who wouldn't miss a day's work for nothing in the world. And that's okay. That's good. As a matter of fact, you ought, you ought to do a day's work for a day's pay. You don't, you're not, you, you shouldn't short your boss no more than you would God. Are you understanding? But, the, but how deep is your devotion to God? And, and my, my uh, uh, treasure can be a measuring stick of just how devoted I really am to the work of God. Just how devoted are you and how and what are you devoted to? What what is our what do we think about? What do we talk about? It can also serve as a warning whenever we see ourselves becoming more interested in worldliness, worldly dress, worldly actions. Are you understand? And, and when we become more, and, and, and a worldly possessions, then in heavenly treasures, if we find ourselves doing that throughout, by, after we used our measuring stick to measure our devotion, if we find ourselves more interested in things of the world, and, and things maybe that's not even sin, but we find ourselves more interested in that then we do heavenly treasures then it's time to seriously do some self-examination. Find out what's going on. It's time. As they would put it, I know people do all kinds of things. But they probably can't do it now. But I knew a man would take, he had about three or four checking accounts. And if he, this one didn't have enough money, he'd take it out of this one, put it here, and he could rotate, rotate his banking account for it seems like two or three weeks before they ever caught up with him, they didn't have no money. <laughs> I don't know how he I didn't try it. Man, I, 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 no, I didn't try that. But in my way of speaking, we need to transfer some deposits from the earthly to the heavenly. You know, people transfer. Now you do it on your cell phone. I can't, I can't even hardly say hello on my cell phone because it, it gets me somewhere else. It just, you know, I try to call one person, I find myself talking to somebody else that I don't even know, you might say. So the treasures that you transfer, Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters. Now how does that fit in here? It's, it's, a, it's a principle that's a fact. You cannot serve God and riches. Because if you if you if you serve in riches, then you're there's nothing wrong with being rich. That's not what the Bible's teaching. The Bible did not say that money's the root of all evil. It said the love of money is the root of all evil. And so he's not talking about having money, but he's talking about letting the money rule you. That's what he's in reference. So that's why he said you can't serve God and mammon. That that's riches. You can't serve both. You're going to love one and hate the other or you'll cleave to one and, and despise the other. You can't serve God and man. Because it just, it just don't work. You can't serve God and treasures unless the treasure is God. It, 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 does, it just doesn't work. I, I think uh, uh, that uh, one thing about uh, riches, uh, it, it don't produce any kind of, of life, uh, just because a person is rich, it don't bring happiness. It doesn't have any any kind of uh, of life to it at all. Uh, and so your treasure has to be laid up in heaven. You have a you have a bank full of money. That's okay, I guess. 
I don't have a bank for it. I, I'm not hurting. But uh, that's not my treasure. Uh, God's spiritual treasure is love, contentment, peace, clear conscience, and the hope of heaven. That's God's spiritual treasure. That's what we need, we need to have. Luke 12, 12, 15 said, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. In other words, if I got a million dollars, that's got nothing to do with my life. That's not where, that's not where, uh, uh, where my uh, life is. It, uh, uh, it doesn't consist uh, of, of what I've got. It consists of how rich am I toward God. It consists of what kind of treasures do I have before God. The rich man became a fool. Remember, Jesus pronounced a fool on him. Said you're, a, said you're a fool, and and he became the world's best example of how not to live. I hope I'm making sense to you. Let's look at Jesus's life just a minute. His words, his actions, his total commitment to his call was a treasure. You say, well, yeah, but he was God. Yeah, but he was also man. He wasn't just God. He was man also. And his ministry, his life, the words that he spoke, his actions, the things that he did, to, it was a total commitment to his call. That's why he would he would be in places where most people wouldn't be. He dealt with people that most people wouldn't deal with. I heard somebody say just the other day, in fact, it was Brother... Uh, 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 Barnes, Brother Barnes, he said he, he doubted very seriously if Jesus was on the earth that he would belong to the United Pentecostal Church because he said he spent his entire life on earth going into areas where most people wouldn't go and dealing with people that most people had already give up like the woman at the well. She was at the well by herself because nobody else would go with her. That's old Brother Creasy's opinion. She went to the well at an hour when the other ladies didn't go to the well. See, they had a certain time they would, the women would go to the well and draw water. She didn't go when they did. She had to go wait, wait and go by herself because to me, no one would have anything to do with her. And Jesus comes along, sits on the well, and says, woman, well, give me a drink of water. She even said, "You don't, the Jews don't have any dealing with us. He said, but if you knew the gift of God and who it was that asked of you, you would ask of me a drink and I'd give you living water. So Jesus' ministry consisted of his word, his treasure rather, consisted of his words, the things that he did. Uh, uh, he, he said you can't serve two masters. Uh, he, he, his, his treasure was, was just at the right place at the right time. Listen carefully to me. What was Jesus' treasure? You can find it recorded in Luke 22, 41. And he withdrew, was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, a stone's cast, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if thy will remove this cup from me, nevertheless not my will, but thine will be done. Jesus was God, and he was also man. He knew where he was going, but his, the old fleshly part of the man didn't want to go. He said, Father, if you would, just remove it. He said, but not my will, but thine be done. John 4, 34, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. So that was his treasure. Jesus' treasure was constantly on his mind. He lived it, he talked it, and his, his life was the treasure. What a minister he was. What about Paul? What about the apostle Paul? How could you talk about a treasure and not talk about Paul? For we have this treasure in earthly vessels, the apostle said in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Paul's treasure that he had was the ministry of Christ that Christ had given him. That was his treasure. He'd rather preach than eat. He even told him, said, when, you, when he was in the prison, 
Remember he was in prison. Roger, I know you read about it when he was cold nights and, and he told, I believe it was John Mark that was coming to see him or something. Maybe not been John Mark. He said, bring me a coat when you come. So, but if you can't bring me a coat, at least bring me the, the scriptures. Bring me the, the, I forget the word he used, parchment. Bring them. Make sure you get me the word. Never mind the coat. If you can't carry them both, never mind the coat. That was his ministry. He loved preaching the word. Paul's treasure was the ministry that God had given him. This was what Paul lived for. That's what we must be. We must be the same way. Philippians 1.21 said, For me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. He saw Jesus. Paul saw him different. Uh, I think probably different than any other character in the New Testament. I think his ministry was was unique to anyone in the New Testament, the way Paul uh, saw Jesus. When, when Jesus, he saw him as the source of grace and peace. Paul saw Jesus as man's hope, only hope. That's what he said. That was his treasure. Paul saw Jesus as a man delivered, that a man of delivering, to deliver people. He saw him as the redeemer, the redeemer of all mankind. He saw Jesus as the image of God. These are things, scriptures, I'm not reading the scriptures, but I, I, I took them from the scripture. These are things that the way the apostles saw him, he saw him as the creator. He saw him as the head of the church. He saw him as a reconciler, one that would reconcile man to God. Jesus was Paul's treasure. What is our treasure tonight? What do we spend our time on? It would do us all good. It would do us really good if we check up on ourselves sometimes. Now, we're Christians. I, I, I believe that. I believe we're Christians. I believe we're baptized in his name, baptized by his spirit. I believe we're, we're on our way to heaven. But what is the focus of our life? What had we rather be doing? What do we think about the most in our life? What do we talk about the most? What is our treasure? Hope I'm, hope I'm touching you tonight. Hope I'm getting to you. Remember what Proverbs 23 and 7 said. Put it on the screen for me, Brother Mark, please. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. As a man thinketh in his heart, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. What is our treasure? Do I, what do I think about? I don't understand, I don't understand, and I, I don't want to be critical, okay? I'm not, going, I'm not going to be critical. But I don't understand pastors that never stay in their church. I don't understand it. I don't understand uh, a, a pastor that don't have a burden for his church. There's nothing wrong with going and preaching a homecoming or something, I'm saying, but I, I can't leave. I'm not going to go and stay gone six months out of 12. I'm just not going to die. If I do that, I'm resigning. If I, if I feel like I got to do that, I'll, I'll just go ahead and resign. Because my treasure, you guys are my treasure. This is it. And I don't understand. Paul saw Jesus different than anybody else did. He said, as he think up in his heart, so is he. But in spite of all of this, listen carefully, in spite of all the goodness of God, and, and we know God's goodness. We know it. Listen, I preached the other night. I preached my guts out the other night. Listen, I preached the other You need to remember some things. Are you understanding? Yes. But in spite of all that God's done for us, God's been good to the Creasy family. I can promise you. Listen here. Listen here. I have evangelists. Stan Cook won, won, as a matter of fact, that has told me how blessed I am, Brother Roger. Tell me how blank you got your children here and a lot of your grandchildren. He said, there's pastors. that said, I know pastors that, that can't even get their kids in church. Nothing. Nobody. And, and said, I'm so blessed. And, and, and said, and I look around, you, I, you see your daughters and you see your grandkids and all. And said, you are so blessed. And I know I'm blessed. I know I am. 
You know, I, I, I don't, like I said, I don't have a lot of money. I got a little money. I can go out and eat tonight if I want to, and, and I can eat every night this week if I want to. And God's been good to me. God has blessed me. I tell God every morning, God, I, you, you, you've been good to me. I, I got no complaints. I got no complaint. In spite of all the, the goodness, in spite of all God's love, in spite of all that God does for us, man or mankind sometimes even choose the wrong treasure. We choose the wrong way. I have the goodness of God. The goodness of God. Sometimes we choose in life the things that mock does corrupt. We choose the natural things sometimes above and beyond the spiritual things. Am I telling the truth? And the rust and the moth and the thieves can break through and steal the natural thing. Man, you, you, you may not have a nickel in your bank account tomorrow. It may, it may be totally gone. I, I don't know how they do all that stuff. But, you know, if they can do some of the stuff that I know they do, the, and there's nothing wrong with, like I said, man, we, we got to have money. We're going to build a building. we got to have some money. <laughs> what guy said, let it walk a while, Rip. Uh, but, but what we choose better be a spiritual choice rather than a natural because somebody could knock you in the head, steal everything you got, your home could burn to the ground, your car could blow up, you you could lose your job. They, they, I heard them talking. Uh, my, uh, my my district secretary, our district secretary, at UPC International, uh, was talking to me on the phone the other day. He called me, and uh, no, he wasn't want advice. He just called me. He won't give advice. Uh, Told me that he the places in Jackson, he said like Burger King and and uh, uh, Wendy's I believe he named and maybe two or three more of the fast food said are offering their people uh, fourteen dollars an hour and and offering them uh, like insurance and offering them four hundred one k just just to come to work. Said they went to a place to to uh, to eat. And, and they said they told them, said, it's going to be, uh, and said, no, no, and, and they went to a place to shop, and they was wanting to buy, it was, there, it was one of the malls at Jackson, they went there, it's up on a second floor, and there was nobody, two people on the whole floor working, two people, and that's out of every store. And said they couldn't even buy. Uh, I forget what sister was. The sister was wanting to buy. Said they couldn't buy because they didn't have anybody to get up on the shelf to get it off the shelf. Mm. Said he, they saw it, and there was a ladder sitting there. He said he told the lady, "I can, I can get up. No, you can't do that. We can't allow that." And so they had to call Brother Roger, plumb over to another store. From not even on that floor, had to call and get somebody to come over there and took them 30 minutes, he said, to get there, to get the ladder, to get up and get this, this whatever this was they were going to buy. We don't know what this world's going to do. We don't know what we're going to wake up to tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. You don't know. And that's why it's so important. I felt so, I felt the urgency to bring this to us tonight that we better put our treasures in the heavenly bank Amen. Amen. what we got take care of it cherish it tithe it do whatever you want to do do whatever you got to do but don't put you uh your confidence in the things and and in spite of all we do in spite of what god does for us Sometimes we, we invest in the things that perish rather than the things of God. Amen? Amen. God is not concerned. See, God, God, Jesus said, come to me. Just come to me, Matthew 11. Come to me and, and, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me. I'm meek and lowly in heart. 
You can find rest for your soul. God is not concerned. I told you a while ago, I can't, I'm not talented. I, I can't, oh, I can thump the bass a little bit, but I'm, I'm ashamed to when, when Michelle and, and Brother Willingham is here. Uh, and, of course, I don't have to when they're here. But uh, I don't have any talents when it comes to music or singing. I'm not a talented, talented person, but God's not concerned with my skills. It doesn't bother God that I can't sing like Brother Cook or Sister Creasy. Boy, she's such a beautiful singer. Amen. None no better. None no better. But it doesn't bother God that I can't do that. It bothers me that I can't play the music like these other people can. It, it, it bothers me. I believe it was Brother Mark, I believe it was, Thinking right after he first started preaching, he said, I got to learn to play music and sing. He said, All preachers have got to be able to something, like, something of that sort. Play music and sing. Well, me and Brother Mark, I think, was left out of that. <laughs> now, y'all heard Brother Mark sing. I haven't heard him sing. He won't let me hear him sing. But God's not interested in my talents, Sister Creasy. That's not what God's interested in. And God is not interested in my ability to build a sanctuary uh, to organize God's not interested in that you know what God is interested in my availability yes, sir. if I can just be available can't do much but I'm here you know you got to have somebody that's going to be here you got a song leader you got to have a song leader that'll be here you got to have a bass player Somebody's got to be here. You got a piano player. Somebody's got to be here. If you're going to have laity, that means somebody has got to be here. God wants us to be available. The church has a message. We've got a message, and we can't hide that message. The message, it ain't popular sometimes, but we got a message. The church must, must, that's you and me, we must have an unmovable determination to preach that message and to live that message. God gave Ezekiel a vision I read today, just today, of the condition of Judah after they were in Babylonian captivity. Uh, it, it was to reveal what had happened to them and why it happened to them and how and to give them hope of the glory of God that God would one day return to them. This man of God had this vision. All right? And God sent a restoration. We call it revival. God sent a restoration to them. God reaches out every day, every day, and restores people to him. We read about it. We hear about it. And we even experience it ourselves. God reaches every day, time and time again. That's why the writer said his grace is sufficient. And, and his mercy endured forever. God is in the restoring business. He reaches out after God cleansed them from idols. Listen carefully. He gave them a new heart. Read the book of Ezekiel. You'll find it. We must let God, and I'm fixing to close. Sister Creasy, come on up. We must let God take away anything in our life that wouldn't be pleasing to him. Amen. Build some treasures in heaven where rot, uh, rust and moth does not bother. Build some treasures. Where are our treasures? being built tonight. What are we building upon? Where your treasures is, that's where your heart will be. Bow your heads with me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, let this word that I taught tonight sink into our hearts, deep into our heart. Put us to thinking. Let us build our treasures in heaven where thieves cannot break through and steal and moth and rust does not eat away at it. 
in Jesus' name. Stand with me. Come around the front however you would like to come and talk to the Lord for just a few minutes. <laughs>